Got another Carrie Stevens screamer for you today. This is called the Dr. White. Very colorful fly with the, the pink and the yellow collar in it. But I chose this because I also wanted to show this has a shoulder of jungle cock body feathers. I like the body feathers. They're used in a number of wet fly patterns as well as some of uh, Carrie's streamer patterns. And I thought this would be a interesting fly to, to showcase those. It's a pretty straightforward fly. And it, it, this one has a floss body and a rib on it. But that is the Dr. White, and I'll get started time. start my Dr. White with my hook on the vise. This is a Partridge CS15 size 2. It is a 10x long streamer hook. I have already attached my thread I'm using to start out with a base layer of thread. This is a UTC 140 denier in black and that is simply to get a nice base layer of thread along the hook shank and you know to start at one end down here and I've just simply put it on there to save a little time and you you're not so bored watching me just wrap thread on a hook debarb the hook now I'm going to put in my tag my tag is silver tinsel I'm using a Danville size 10 silver and gold mylar tinsel the tag on this one, according to the Hilliard book, is pretty short. I was surprised. Something I have yet to kind of find out if there's a rhyme or reason to the positioning of the tag and or its length and placement and so on. But this one in the, like I said, in the Hilliard book, really, really is short. Only two or three wraps of tinsel back here. So I'm going to keep with the image that I saw there and just keep this one real short. My tinsel piece is a little bit short, so I'm kind of helping it out by, i get one more wrap in here, making certain I don't lose hold of it and it all unravels. By just putting your finger right there, you keep that wrap in place while you're bringing it around. So the Dr. White is a pretty simple, straightforward pattern. Once you get that in, you're going to put the tail in. Tail is some golden pheasant. I'm going to select probably in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 barbs off this feather. I want to try and roll those a little bit so that I have the darker, more pronounced sides facing outward. And I'm going to tie that in so that it sticks back about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch past the bend of the hook. There is a rib on the Dr. White. It also is the same tinsel, and it's a silver tinsel. So I'm going to tie this in with the gold side up. And then I'm going to, matter of fact, I don't have to worry about it that much. I was trying to be more conservative with my thread wraps. I didn't want to have a big bump, but I've got a black floss body going in. So to make certain that that rib is going to stay in, I'm just going to leave a little bit more out there. As I said I have a black floss body. I'm using a Danville four-strand rayon in black.
I'm going to use all four strands on this, and I want to get probably a good six to eight inches off of the spool. I don't want to run out and then have to tie in some more. I'm going to tie this in, leaving the end pretty much the length of the body, and then start bringing my thread forward. I want to flatten the thread out. It'll just give me a smoother underbody, but I'll also go from one end of the shank to the other a little bit quicker with flatter thread. Once I have this thread up to the front, which will be just inside the headspace a little bit, I will apply the floss and then I'll apply the rib. It's not such a concern as to how many wraps of the rib that I put in, as much as it is making certain that they are evenly spaced. Generally, on a body like this, I'm going to get probably anywhere from 9 to 11 wraps of that rib. I were going the full length of the hook shank being from just past the point here on up, it'd be somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 12. here I probably should have given myself a couple more inches hey you know what I'm gonna wrap back here just a couple and I'll show you how I go about if I have to do this like this I'm gonna unwrap my thread here this happens sometimes and it certainly isn't worth unwrapping all the floss all the thread to get back and tie in a longer piece of floss. So I will just bring this forward a little bit, get a wrap or two in there to secure that floss. Trim that away. Get another piece of floss here. Tying that butt end down to about the end of the head space and then just wrap that down, keeping it fairly smooth. And then this, I want to flatten this out, bring it forward. The problem is you're going to end up with a little bit of a bump right there. You can kind of push that down a little bit. But I'm going to stretch these out just a little bit because I have more thread and floss underneath. And I don't want to increase the diameter on that. And that little bump's pretty much going to be covered up by the wing and everything. But I might be able to mitigate that a little bit. But right now, that's how I just handled that problem. 
a little luck, our rib's gonna go right over that, cover that up. able to get the rib right over that and then pull on this tinsel a little bit to kind of pull it down. And then bring that all the way up here. I'm actually a little further forward than I want to be. So for the most part we recovered. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They're a little bit closer spaced together than uh, I wanted, but I got about halfway down and just kept going with that. The Dr. White does not have a band of color in the head on this. I'm to the point where I'm going to tie in the throat and the wings, and there's a hackle on this. So I'm going to use my finishing thread, which is a six aught anvil. Attach that behind the eye of the hook, working backwards to trap in both threads. Cut that away. Now I'm going to wrap back down to the end of the head space. There is an underwing on the Dr. White, and it is some peacock curl. You want four to six strands of peacock curl. We're going to tie these in about the length of the tail. And then we're going to tie in the throat. The throat is some pink hackle. I'm using some pink schloppen here. I have three clumps already processed. I'm going to tie the first one in just under the hook shank. Tie the second one just on the far side. Same length as the first one, just on the side of the head space right here. And the third one will be on my side of the hook shank. Same length as the throat, the original, just on my side of the head space. Cleaning this space up a little bit, I'm ready for the wings. The wings are pretty straightforward on the Dr. White. They are two white hackles with some jungle cock shoulder feathers. There's as a shoulder. I should say jungle cock body feathers as a shoulder. There is no cheek on this so there's no jungle cock eye or anything like that. These are already pre-processed. Take a look at either the supplement 
video I did for the Canary or Dave special, show you how I process those and prepare these to be tied in. I'm going to tie the first one. It's right on the headspace here. Make certain you're not getting too far back. This head is a little bit different because we have a hackle that's actually going to be palmered, not palmered, but collared in up front. Now, I generally will tie those the far side like I just did first because I can see it better. Some of the other videos I've done, I tie this side on first so that you, the viewer, can see it better. So take a look at Dave's special or the Artula or even the Blue Charm, and you'll see that I tie it on my side first if it'll help clarify. I want to make certain both of those are more or less not quite on top of the headspace, but you want them nice and flat and perpendicular to the hook. So now cleaning this up, I think my overall length of the head got away from me just a little bit. When you get used to tying these with longer heads and bands of color and all this, you just kind of get used to that proportion. The Dr. White has a collar of soft yellow hackle in it. I'm going to use some schloppen here. Usually, what I'll do is just take like the tip of a feather if I have some sitting around where I've used some schloppen for throats or something. I have a tip like this. I can usually just use that and put that in. I'm going to go with a regular sized feather here because I might put in an extra wrap or two of that collar to fill that space up. I'm going to stroke the fibers back from the tip a ways. And then holding those back, I'm going to wrap that tip in where I separated that a couple, two, three wraps, hold that back, and then wrap down on that nice and tight and bring my thread down towards the eye of the hook. I don't have to be all the way at the eye of the hook. Then I can pop this tip right off, taking my hackle pliers. I can then Start stroking these fibers back, I can wrap this hackle in. Here, I'll probably just put in, that's about it. I'm actually slipping down towards the eye of the hook, and that's fine. Taking this off, hold everything back. And now, wrapping up on all of that, I will make the head of the fly. We get about halfway down that. And then the rest of that feather, if I can, I'll pop it off. If I can't, I don't risk it. Just go ahead, reach in with your scissors, flip that off, and then continue making the head of the fly, just working your way backwards a little bit. It's a big fly, so the head's going to be a little bit bigger than like you put on a wet fly or something. So that's all right, but it's not because of that collar, and we don't have a color of thread or anything up here. It's not going to be as long as on her typical feather wing streamers. 
So making certain everything's covered up there. Flatten my thread. And I'll get a lip finish in here. I'm going to put some head cement on this, and then I'm just going to put one light coat of a clear lacquer on here to just seal up those thread wraps, give it a little bit of a sheen to it. And then our Dr. White will be complete. Probably, like I said, my head is a little bit longer than it should have been when I put that hackle in. And I know it's just a few wraps. It's not a lot, not a real heavy collar. So probably a little practice there and we'll get that down a little bit better. But there is the Dr. White. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.